so welcome uh, everybody uh, to one more uh, telecom seminar. Actually, uh, we are organizing a TII Technology Innovation Institute uh, in um, the Digital Science Research Center, the telecom unity is uh, organizing this kind of uh, events after every two weeks on a bi-weekly basis. And they are always trying uh, to invite some renowned researchers, professors of our community to give, uh, to deliver a talk in one of uh, these uh, emerging um, communication talks. And I'm Dr. Daniel Acosta. I'm currently a, a principal researcher at uh, TII in Abu Dhabi. And for today, it's a big pleasure for, for us uh, to have a Professor George Akarajanidis uh, as the speaker of uh, this telecom seminar. Uh, in this talk, uh, today's talk, uh, he will discuss the application of uh, wireless federated learning in 6G networks, uh, as well as the demand challenges imposed by wireless environment and the fit direction, etc. Actually, Professor George Karajan needs, uh, I think it, he needs no introduction. Uh, he's a very uh, a renowned researcher of our community. And particularly, uh, I mean, uh, it was very important to, for my uh, graduation studies. Uh, his works on channel modeling and fading inspired me a lot in my, uh, during my uh, PhD uh, work, uh, I mean, uh, more than 15 years ago. So uh, he has contributed uh, in many different ways to the community, okay? Uh, let me formally introduce him uh, just uh, uh, reading uh, his uh, uh, biography. So George uh, Karajanidis is currently a professor uh, in the electrical and computer engineering uh, department of uh, uh, department of electrical and computer engineering in uh, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece. And he's also the, the head of wireless communication information processing group. Uh, his uh, research interests are in the broad area of digital communication system and signal processing with emphasis on wireless communications, optical wireless communications, wireless power transfer, and application communications, signal process for biomedical engineering. Uh, Professor Karajanidis was the editor-in-chief of AAA Communications Letters. And currently uh, he serves as associate editor-in-chief for AAA Open Journal of the Communication Society. He's also a AAA fellow. He is a highly cited researcher and has been recognized from Clarivate Analytics at Web of Science in the seven consecutive years uh, from 2015-2021 as a highly cited researcher. So, uh, Professor George Karajanidis, thank you very much once again for accepting uh, our invitation. And now uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. And uh, also, I would like to congratulate you for your new position as Associate Editor-in-Chief in the uh, Open Journal of Communication Society, starting from uh, July 1st, if I'm right. Yes, uh, yes. Congratulations for- a great uh, responsibility for to replace you, hopefully. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, it is my pleasure to give uh, this talk uh, you know, I was um, uh, three years in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, Abu Dhabi is in uh, my heart. And uh, now I'm very happy that uh, Abu Dhabi has, has a center, a research center like this one, that's the AIO, uh, which is one of, uh, of the most uh, well-known in the Middle East and not, not uh, only. So uh, the title of my, my talk, as you said, is um, uh, Wireless Federated Learning for uh, 6G Networks. And uh, I'm going to give you uh, some, uh, an overview of what is Wireless Federated Learning, how WFL can be utilized in 6G Networks. And also I will give you some, um, uh, let's say more details about uh, our work, uh, our research on, uh, on this uh, topic. So uh, the, my talk is split it in, uh, in mainly in six parts. Uh, in the first 
two parts. Uh, I will give you a, a general overview of, uh, of federated learning and especially wireless federated learning. And uh, also how edge computing can be combined with uh, WFL. In the next um, two parts, I will uh, present uh, our recent uh, research on uh, this topic. After that, I will open a parenthesis and uh, I will give you some aspects on the, uh, on the over the air computing, which is uh, one of uh, uh, one promising topic uh, to break orthogonality and thus to be used in WFL. And uh, finally, and last but not least, I will uh, close my talk with uh, some uh, future uh, research uh, directions. Okay, it is uh, well known that uh, the main scope of 6G is to be an integrated communication and computing platform with the capability to serve a vast amount of heterogeneous heterogeneous next generation Internet of Things application. For example, autonomous vehicles, uh, augmented uh, reality, uh, smart uh, farming, uh, etc. So the main pillar is of the 6G is the twofold use of distributed AI. Distribute twofold use means that AI can be used as to uh, as uh, in two directions, namely first the optimization of wireless networks performance by using distributed machine learning techniques, and two the enhancement of data driven applications that are based on machine learning by the joint device, the, the, joint, the joint design and optimization of communication and computing uh, networks. Based on these considerations, distributed AI seems to be one of the main pillars of the next uh, generation uh, Internet of Things. Okay. Let's see now the two aspects of machine learning, central lines versus, versus uh, distributed. The standard machine learning techniques are based on a centralized concept where the data are uploaded and processed on a single entity. entity. For example, uploaded to a central uh, server. However, the strict latency requirements and the data privacy assurance renders the centralized configurations impractical for forthcoming applications such as smart grids, autonomous vehicles, and augmented reality and other applications. So it is very uh, critical the combination the combination to mention that the combination of the of these limitations with the growing computational capabilities of devices paves the way towards implementing distributed frameworks for the construction of uh, learning models. In the central, in the decentralized solutions, devices coll collaboratively train a model by leveraging their local computational resources. Among the decentralized approaches, federated learning has been proposed as a promising solution for, prote for protecting the data privacy, but also to meet the low latency demands for the next generation uh, networks. But let's see in one slide what is federated learning. In 2017, Google introduced the term 
federated learning as an approach that enables mobile devices to train in a collaboration mode, in a collaboration mode, machine learning models while keeping the raw training data on its user's devices, decoupling the ability to do machine learning from the need to store the data in the cloud. Since this introduction of, of federated learning from Google, several companies have, have continued to actively engage, engage in federated lear, learning research and deployed federated learning to power many futures, features in Gboard, including next word prediction, emoji, suggestion and out of uh, vocabulary uh, work discovery. We can see in uh, this slide also uh, a picture where we have a phone which personalizes the mold, the model locally based on, uh, on uh, its usage. And many users, other users, updates are aggregated to form a concession change C to the SERP model. We have a SERP model and all the other uh, devices uh, submit some parameters in order to the SERP models. And then this procedure is repeated again. Okay, now let's talk about wireless federated learning. We talked before for federated learning, for its introduction. Let's talk now for wireless federated learning. We can see the WFL architecture in these uh, slides. As I said before, federated learning refers to train a certain model in the distributed manner by exploiting the collected data of the mobile devices without those being intervened by the server. In this way, its device contributes to the construction of the model by performing local training of this data set while the server's role is to aggregate, update, and redistribute the updated model back to the user. As a result, each user benefits from the local data sets of the residual participants with the aid of a central server while the data privacy is preserved. In the slides, we can see a WFL network which consists of end users and a base station which acts as a server. Its learner performs the model training through its local data individually and forwards only the training parameters to, um, to the central server. Actually, there are two papers published from my uh, research team as a series, a part one, part two in uh, uh, W in, in uh, communication letters uh, some months ago, uh, which are very useful to understand how the WFL uh, works. Let's say some things about uh, the WFL training process. The whole training process is divided in an arbitrary number of communication rounds denoted by I. Thus, the I round is described by the following steps. First step, the BS broadcasts wirelessly the global parameter WI to all users during the considered round. Step number two, after receiving the global par model parameter, its user trains its local model by applying a few steps of the gradient descent method or some other method, and then uploads the local parameter w, W1 plus WI uh, I plus one to the server. 
and in step three, after receiving all the local parameters, the server, which is, which is in our case is, a bay, for example, a base station, aggregates them in order to update the global, uh, the global model uh, parameter. But what are the advantages of WFL? Why we are talking now for the uh, possibility to use WFL in the next generation network. First advantage is privacy. As mentioned previously, users do not share their raw data with the server or any of the residual participants. Therefore, the privacy preserving mechanism constitutes an inherent characteristic of FL. Don't forget that privacy is one of the most critical characteristic of the next generation networks. Second advantage is the very low latency. Since no raw data are sent to the cloud, the amount of information transmitted into the network is reduced. This also decreases the communication cost. But not only. Decisions and model training can be executed locally on the, on the end devices instead of being said, sent to the server, leading to decreased latency. And last but not least advantage of WFL is the system heterogeneity. The devices participating in the learning process might present heterogeneity in terms of computational communication resources and data heterogeneity which deals with non-independent and identical distribution of data among users. FL, WFL, has the potential to tackle with the former issues. Let's discuss now applications of wireless federated learning. Smart grid. Smart grids can be seen as the superposition of electricity and communication networks, which enables the two-way flow of power and data, facilitating the active participation of all users in the energy management, the precise prediction of energy consumption, the avoidance of security risks, and other many important features. This approach, leads to the generation and the requirement of processing of an enormous amount of data, which might be difficult or even impossible to be stored and processed centrally. We are talking to process big data centrally, and this is not possible. Despite the important benefits of the electricity networks, in delification and the exchange of information between different entities and the processing of data at the cloud exposes the smart grids to potential security and private and privacy risk. To overcome this challenge, because these are very, very critical challenges. Don't forget that we are talking about the, 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 the grid, the electricity grid of a country. To overcome these challenges, the iterative local processing of data by the smart meters and aggregators at the edge, and the global exploitation of the corresponding output in a collaborative manner through WFL can be particularly useful. Let's talk now about uh, the uh, use of WFL in self-driving or in autonomous a vehicle. It is well known that autonomous vehicles are is an emerging application which is envisioned to be realized with the aid of 6G wireless networks. In order to support coordination among these vehicles and satisfy the requirements of of vehicular networks without without drivers, ML-based techniques 
constitute a significant tool. This is very important. We cannot, it is not possible to implement vehicle networks as we understand these networks without to use AI techniques. Relevant applications are the, autonom the autonomous driving with collaboration, collision avoidance systems, visual object detection and traffic uh, congestion uh, control. Usually, in this case, the model training is performed in, at the central ground of, in an offline manner. This is now the situation. However, this approach cannot adapt to the dynamic system changes. So WFL in this case, in this case, could alleviate this burden as a highly adaptive technique, which monitors the environmental changes in real time. Furthermore, each vehicle could benefit from the rest of vehicles observation, again in a collaborative manner, leading to increased environmental, environmental uh, knowledge. Last but not least, FL has the potential to reduce the data traffic, which is very critical for latent critical applications such as the autonomous vehicles. Another possibility to use WFL in the next generation network is augmented reality. It is well known that augmented reality provides an, in, an interactive experience to the user by combining the virtual contents with the real world. Traditionally, AR models are trained in a centralized manner, again, as previously the uh, in the case of autonomous cars. However, the latency sensitive AR applications impose new challenges, while the centralized ML approach becomes non applicable, also in this case, as before. Therefore, FL is capable of providing low latency for object detection tasks and classification project, uh, problems. Are there challenges for WFL? Yes, there are many challenges now for WFL. I can present now some of them. The first is the resource allocation and participant selection. In order to meet the strict, the strict latency energy and training efficiency requirements, the bandwidth allocation, the transmission power control and the devices, CPU frequency clock speed need to be jointly orchestrated, jointly uh, combined. It is worth, no worth noting that the resource allocation problem is highly related with the multiple access protocol selection. Besides remote resource management, the number of uh, participating users in the uh, federate in the WFL task must be tactfully selected, carefully selected. This is because the delay of a round is determined by the slowest device. It is very important to understand this point. The delay of a round is determined by the slowest device. As a result, devices with limited computational capabilities or poor wireless channel conditions, because don't forget that we have a wireless channel here, are responsible for the occurrence of long delays and can ne negatively affect the convergent speed of the model. Okay. The second challenge is the trade-off between latency per round and number of total rounds. 
Increased number of local iteration may lead to decreased number of required, required rounds in the expense of energy consumption and larger latency per round. On the other hand, the execution of few local iterations are energy saving and, uh, and achieve smaller latency per round. However, an increased number of total communication rounds may be forced. Okay, let's proceed to the next challenge. Next challenge is the trade-off between model performance and convergence, uh, and convergence uh, speed. The inherent unreliability of wireless links can impact the quality of the WFL performance. Also, the number of local updates that this device executes can affect the global model performance. As we said, we have uh, the execution in the devices and the updating the training model in the, in the, in the server. By performing a few local iteration, a decreased global performance may occur. Reversely, the local over optimization could lead to divergence and deterioration of the global uh, model accuracy. Okay, and uh, uh, another challenge is privacy and security. And uh, the last but not least is the dynamic wireless environment. Especially the last one is very important because uh, we are talking about wireless links and wireless links are unreliable and can often vary through time. These dynamic changes can affect users' willingness regarding participation throughout the whole training process. Specifically, active devices may be obligated to drop out the training process in an arbitrary time instance, instant due to connectivity issues related with bad channel condition or energy intensive uh, tasks. To circumvent this challenge, adaptive methods should be adopted, which dynamically uh, design or better orchestrate, orchestrate the WFL network during the uh, training uh, procedure. Okay, uh, in this slide, we can, uh, I, I will present uh, an interesting, um, uh, an interesting scheme, which is the use of um, the well-known edge computing uh, for uh, WFL. And uh, this is, uh, let's say the result of, um, of uh, our recent uh, submitted paper to IEEE systems uh, around two weeks ago. Uh, the title of this paper is Optimization of, uh, of uh, Hierarchical Federated Learning over Wireless Networks, where we, we introduce the term uh, Hierarchical Federated Learning, uh, which is a new term. Okay, uh, using the, the concept of the edge computing or using the edge resources might be particularly beneficial for WFL, specifically a hybrid edge cloud scheme, which we call, as I said before, hierarchical federated learning, has shown to, uh, to present a great potential, has shown to be a great potential in achieving both large scale data access and efficient wireless communications. In the considered architecture, we, well, which we, we can see in this uh, uh, slide, users train the learning model locally and subsequently send the training parameters to the edge servers, which perform edge-based federated uh, averaging. A further layer of model averaging is then implemented on top of the edge network, we can see the top of the edge network where it is connected with the cloud 
server with uh, uh, front home uh, link, links. This we have here a centralized cloud server, which generates the global training model. In this way, multiple clusters of users are enabled are enabled to participate simultaneously, leading to a distributed federated learning framework uh, concept, which with which redu uh, reduces the communication latency and provides scheduling uh, flexibility and enhance scalability and uh, and in the last robust accurate models okay I, I will say less than one minute some more about this in order to maximize to maximize the benefits of the synergy between edge computing and wireless federated learning we formulate and solve the, the problem that you can see in these uh, slides, which minimize, minimizes <coughs> the total latency of, uh, of an hierarchical federated learning round with minim, minimum energy uh, consumption. Actually, this is a minimax problem where we ask for minimum energy consumption and this is, and this we can do by jointly optimize the computational and, compute and communication resources and user edge assignment. Also, we consider here that only a subset of the available users <coughs> will be scheduled for participation, since this scenario reflects a practical implementation of uh, federated learning. Okay, in the next slides, I will give you briefly some um, aspects about um, uh, our um, research on um, WFL. And uh, the first is the so-called the compute then transmit uh, NOMA, the compute then transmit non-orthogonal multiple axis Paradigm. As I mentioned before, the utilization of advanced multiple access protocols and the joint optimization of communication and computing resources can facilitate the reduction of delay for wireless federated learning, which is of paramount importance for the efficient integration of WFL in the next generation network, because uh, latency is a very critical parameter for uh, 6G networks. So in this work, we have introduced and optimized a novel communication protocol for WFL networks that is based on the well-known non-orthogonal multiplexes. Actually, in this work, the, we introduce the compute then transmit NOMA protocol where users terminate concurrently the local model training and then simultaneously transmit the trained parameter, parameters to the central server. Also, we utilize two different detection schemes for the mitigation of the inter-user interference in NOMAD, and these are well-known schemes. Uh, uh, this is uh, which correspond to fixed and variable decoding order during the uh, seek the succession interference uh, cancellation uh, process. Let's see in more detail here, uh, the utilized computation, res computation resources for local model training, for example, the CPU cycle frequency from the nth user, here is denoted SFN, the number of CPU cycles for the nth user to perform one sample of data in local model training is denoted by CN here. And so the computational time dedicated for the for a local iteration is given as tau n 
in the top left hand side um, uh, of this uh, slide. Accordingly, the energy consumption can be defined as EN comp with this equation in the slide. All users are enforced to complete the local computations within a certain time with the corresponding energy that is cons consumed by each user being a decreasing function with respect to tau n. Thus, it should, it should hold this one, the, uh, this equation here. Also, the data size, size Zn of the Wn model parameter that the nth user transmits within the time duration should follow the above conditions for the case for the case of fixed decoding order and time sharing, or it is this is equivalent to RSMA uh, protocol, the well-known RSMA is a well-known protocol. Okay. So so the aim of the consider optimization problem, which is uh, in the bottom of this slide, is to minimize the total delay of a WFL round, which is the tau plus T. And this is actually the sum of the computation and transmission latency. Okay, we have uh, developed uh, an R, uh, we have um, developed an, R, an, R, an algorithm to solve this problem, and we have closed form solution and the bisection. We, we utilize the bisection method and uh, to solve this problem. I will skip this slide. Here we can see the. Uh, the, the problem with the case in the case where we use a fixed decoder in order. The, the optimization problem here for, is for minimizing the total delay the cave in the case of fixed decoding order can be written as uh, in this slide and can be transformed easily transformed to a convex problem and be solved by using convex optimization uh, tools. I will not go in more details in this uh, slide. Save time. Let's see some uh, results here. In the left, uh, in the figure in the left uh, side of uh, this, uh, uh, in the left side of this slide, we can see the impact of the user's maximum available energy on the average latency during a WFL uh, round. We use the TDMA based protocol as benchmark. It is necessary to have a benchmark and compare this protocol with CityNOMA in terms of the delay reduction, take into account both considered detection schemes for NOMA, detection schemes before uh, that I mentioned before. In the right figure, in the right figure, uh, we can see the impact of the user's parameter data size on latency, on, on the latency. It is uh, interesting to see here that the superiority of city norma uh, with time sharing against city norma with fixed decoding order and TDMA is again corroborated. Furthermore, city norma with fixed decoding order presents a slightly enhanced performance in comparison with uh, uh, TDMA. This is evident in, uh, in this slide. Okay, uh, now I will, I will uh, show a very recent uh, work that uh, submitted to IEEE transactions on wireless communications uh, two months ago, around two months ago. And uh, this is uh, called the Wireless Quantized Federated Learning. 
In this work, a different approach to mitigate the communication bottleneck is the, the quantization of the local model parameters prior to, up, to uplink transmission. We have worked, as I said before, on quantized WFL for the last one year. Among others, we have performed the convergence analysis of the FL algorithm with stochastic parameters, which reveals the impact of the quantization error on the uh, convergence array. Following this, uh, this uh, research, we jointly optimized the computing and communication resources and the number of quantization bits in order to guarantee minimized convergence time across all global rounds subject to energy and quantization error requirements. Here we can see the uh, problem, the, the op optimization problem. I will not go in detail. I will just comment on, um, on the two, the first two constraints. Uh, constraint one is related with, with the successful transmission of the local training parameters. And uh, constraint two indicates the dedicated energy, both for computation and transmission purposes. In order this parameter to not to exceed the maximum available energy of the end uh, users, of the end users at the T round. Okay. Uh, if there is a question later, we can also I, I can also explain the rest of um, the rest of uh, constraints C three, C four, and um, now, as I said in the beginning of my talk, I will open a parenthesis. To, uh, to discuss another approach, which is called over the air computing, air comp here, which is an alternative way to break orthogonality, an alternative way to NOMA in order to break orthogonality. The basic principle of air comp is to exploit the waveform superposition property of a wireless channel to realize over the air aggregation of data simultaneously, of, of data simultaneously transmitted, uh, transmitted by devices. Simultaneous transmission, transmission of the data in Aircom allows each device to access all the radio resources instead of only a fraction of them, as in the conventional orthogonal multiplexes here. This allows how high spectral efficiency and a vivid interpretation of the key feature of air commits to harness interference in order to help functional computation there and, and so turning the air into a computer. Okay, the two main, uh, no, high spectral, high spectral efficiency is one of the basic, of the most important uh, uh, characteristic of this approach, the ERCOM. Simultaneous transmission in ERCOM allows it devices to access all the radio resources instead of only a fraction of them, as I, I think, as, as I said before. The main enablers of AirCom, the AirCom is based on linear analog modulation. I mentioned before about waveform design and Channel pre-compensation at, at its transmitter and post-processing at the receiver. What are the challenges? 
related to, air, to Aircom. In Aircom, channel inversion is usually implemented at the transmitters by adjusting the transmission power to achieve magnitude alignment at the receiver. However, when one of, or more individual channels are in deep fade, as happens in some, in some cases, enforcing the magnitude alignment constraint can result in large air comp uh, errors. The reason is, the reason for this is that a very small alignment factor has to be chosen in order to make possible for all devices to include those with weak link, links and perform channel inversion. This suggests that uniform channel inversion may, may not be always desirable and the optimal power control policy for ERCOM should be adapted to multi-user channel uh, states. Okay. And I will close uh, my talk with some uh, future research directions uh, related to uh, wireless federated learning. The first is the advanced multiplexes, uh, the need for advanced multiplexer techniques for WFL. The efficient integration of WFL in the next generation network depends, as I said, several times before on the utilized multiplexer scheme. So hybrid schemes, which combine NOMA, OMA, and ERCOM are worth of investigation. The second, a second recent direction for WFL is to use, to use it over fog radio access network. The edge nodes in this case can assist in the training process during WFL and decongest the local device devices for computational intensive tasks. Also, in this case, hierarchical federated learning, which I uh, mentioned before, this is uh, one of, uh, of our recent uh, work, we have introduced the term, the term hierarchical federated learning, seems to be a very promising approach. And last but not least is asynchronous communication. In the conventional synchronous communication protocol, the latency of each round is determined by the, slow, the, low, the slowest device. I mentioned also this before. Slowest device is is the critical device for a wireless federated learning network. And second, the asynchronous configuration allows, part, allows participants to join the federated learning task in an arbitrary time instant, even if a training round is still, is, is still in progress. In our opinion, these are very interesting future direction on this uh, topic. Thank you very much. In this slide, you can see my home village in uh, Samos Island. Uh, Samos Island is an island in the Central East Aegean Sea. And uh, on the left hand side of, uh, the, of this uh, picture, we can see Pythagoras, the Pythagoras uh, monument in, uh, in my village. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, George, for the very nice talk. Uh, now we move to a key section, okay? So uh, with uh, any participant has a question, so feel free to write your question in the chat box or raise your hand and make the question by yourself. Okay, we have some questions. Uh, let me check the first one. Uh, the first one is about uh, uh, IID uh, data. Uh, it's uh, mentioned a lot of federated learning model require IID 
uh, data. So, and you say uh, during the presentation, federated learning may not need IID. I mean, uh, no IID, no in the independent uh, distributed, identical in the uh, no identical independent distributed. So, can you please explain on this point? Uh, George, uh, you are muted. So, so what is exactly the question? Yeah, uh, the question. I, 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 I hear, I hear the about, about IID data, but uh, what, what's exactly your uh, your question? Yeah, the, uh, it's from the uh, the participants. It's uh, to explain uh, why federated learning may not need IID. Actually, I didn't understand uh, exactly the question, but I'm supposed that there uh, is about. Uh, uh uh the no uh iid uh, data requirement for federate learning how, how to make it in a design a distributed uh, a learning uh process considering uh no independent no identically distributed uh data uh, do you mean that we have data from uh, uh, data from the users that uh, 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 they they have, they are they submit in a, in a in a non IID uh, process. What? Yeah, the I, data I, are generated. Yeah. The data are generated. The data are generated as non IID data. What is it? I would uh, ask uh, the participant uh, to explain to better. I mean, explain uh, the question. Okay. So okay. Meanwhile, okay. Let's move uh, to the second question. Okay. So you know, in your work of, of uh, resource optimization for wireless federated learning, what kind of power constraint have you considered for the devices that are participating? In, Is it a peak in, a power which, constraint? Which work? Which work? A resource optimization for wireless federated learning. You mean in our work? Yes, is it a peak power constraint for the device or a some power constraint? Just just wait to find uh, the yeah. you, uh, you mean here in this problem? Uh, in this, in this protocol in this protocol. He, uh, sure, uh, they are, the participants should that. Uh, should explain also actually which part because uh, you 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 presented uh, an optimization problem and uh, before yes I, I, I have presented several optimization problems that's yes, why yes, I'm yes. asking to you that's why I'm asking yes yeah, so okay let me is, uh, okay is this is, is, is the you mean the energy that it's the, the energy here to to submit and process the data. There is energy to submit and the energy to process the data is the sum of this energy. Okay. So energy is also a resource, a resource uh, uh, is, is a resource here. Also the, uh, together with, uh, of course, the bandwidth. Okay, okay, okay. With you, with, with uh, okay, with, uh, actually it's not exactly a, uh, with uh, optimization problem, uh, the okay, if there is a, any, any specific a, a specific, uh, I think you you will share you will share my my talk. Am I right? Sorry, uh, my talk is recorded yeah. and you, you yes. will uh, share. yes yes. So if, yes. so if there is any, any specific question on the optimization or something like that, it's better to to send me an email and to and oh, okay. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I ask the uh, for anyone uh, uh, who has a more uh, specific question, please uh, drop an email to Professor George Karajinidis. George, I have a two uh, general questions. Uh, it's yes. about uh, mobility. Actually, yes. uh, how to deal with mobility uh, in federated learning, especially when we have, for example, low latency uh, learning processing in. Uh, uh, also, uh, the the convergence. How to guarantee the convergence? Okay, I I, I will reply to your to a very important question about mobility. Mobility 
uh, is one of the of the factor that affects the uh, wireless federated learning process. I mentioned in one of my slides that uh, we have here a wireless network. That means that uh, if we have a, a time varying network, this means that uh, we have uh, this this uh, significant, significantly affects the the performance uh, of uh, the network. For example, um, uh, what's happened with uh, uh, with the channel estimation, uh, if we have uh, such a network. So uh, this is, I think, in my opinion, this is a very interesting open problem. How a time varying channel, as uh, the channel that we have in a, in a mobility environment affects the, uh, the wireless federated learning process. Yes, because, uh, yeah, uh, because the connection between the, the, the participant devices I mean, in the edge service is transient, right? Due to this mobility. Yeah. And this, I yeah. mean, uh, impact directly on this uh, learning process. So, exactly. uh, yeah, definitely. Exactly. It's, uh, and, uh, oh, uh, you know, the, that, that's why we try, and also other researchers try to minimize, to minimize the information transmitted, transmitted over the wireless channel. And uh, for example, by using um, quantized uh, information or something like that. In order to to reduce the 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 effect of the time varying channel, uh, which happens in a, in a, a mobile environment, when we have uh, users that uh, with mobility, for example. Okay, uh, one qu another question is: Could you please elaborate more on the challenges uh, imposed by noise in wireless yes. propagation for aircom? And how do impairments on analog modulation affect wireless federated learning? How can digital modulations benefit? You are, you are, you are talking about Aircom? Yes, Aircom. Yes, yes. And just to find uh, first this slide. Okay. You mean this one? Uh, uh, yeah, Daniel? yeah. It, Yes, 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 yes. It's you basically the question he further uh, how are the noise and wireless propagation, uh, I mean, uh, affects in uh, the challenging uh, behind uh, this uh, uh, impediment. Uh, did you hear the noise? What did you say? Yeah. The, uh... Uh, the, the challenges uh, imposed by the noise and wireless propagation. And for Aircom, I mean, please elaborate uh, more on on that. Okay, okay, uh, we can see the slides, uh, the challenges that are related to Aircom, uh, and the noise can affect can affect as you can see here, and this is uh, well known. Uh, uh, most of these uh, bullets, for example, uh, we can uh, the dependence on CSI. Or, or the use of digital modulation. What kind of digital modulation uh, uh, we can use in our comp? Uh, because you know, uh, depending on the on the uh, on the form of the modulation and also the the order of the modulation, uh, the uh, the uh, noise can affect also the performance. Uh, the noise can affect the performance, as I said in uh, in. Uh, in the CSI, and uh, also uh, noise can affect in the when we have my uh, uh, systems where uh, we need there the a joint optimization of precoders and uh, devices and the aggregation performance performance uh, performance the server. I think I can I can uh, reply in this direction. Okay. And how about the impairments on analog modulation? And how can digital modulation benefit? Okay. Uh, this is a very good question. And uh, digital modulation, in my opinion, digital modulations now, the, uh, the form of the modulation is uh, very critical for, uh, not only for Aircom, also for other, for other uh, uh, techniques uh, in the next generation networks. So uh, we have the phase we have the phase uh, error phase error in digital modulation which can which can affect 
the performance. We have the, and also we have the um, other parameters which is uh, connected with uh, this modulation. And no, and it should, should be, I, I should, uh, I would like to note here that there is, there is um, uh, most of the researchers now, uh, for example, um, uh, if I remember well, Huawei and other researchers try to use a very high order modulation. I think at Motorola, in my right, uh, Alcatel, Alcatel. Uh, they, they try to use very high order modulations, um, more than um, uh, on 16K or 8K uh, symbols. So in this case, it's, uh, the, the noise is very strong and, uh, uh, ha and has a very uh, strong effect on the performance and also other, other impairments, as, as you said, uh, Daniel, as the phase noise, the phase noise here is very uh, critical. So um, uh, the last bullet, I think it's very interesting for research. And uh, this is one of the most critical uh, direction, not only for Ernkrom, as I said, but also uh, for other uh, techniques uh, if we if we want to have if we want to have a very high speed uh, net to increase the speed in the next generation networks. Okay, uh, another question is about: uh, Do you think open run can be linked to your research? No, no, not yet. But I think, but I but I think it's also a very interesting uh, direction to uh, to. To use and to utilize the open run concept in uh, in this case, but we okay. we have not worked on this uh, direction. Another question is about uh, autonomous driving. I mean, yes. it requires a huge amount of data for different drivers, uh, which is not easy to collect in the real world. So, can Federate Learn be the solution for such applications? Actually. Uh, Okay, the, the, the critical uh, there is uh, in, in autonomous driving is uh, to reduce the latency. And um, we, uh, we support that uh, WFL can help on this direction to reduce, uh, to reduce the latency. Uh, but not only this one, this, uh, only, not only uh, to reduce the latency, also to preserve the privacy. Of the of the data because you know that privacy of the data is very important in this case in this case to avoid uh, accidents and uh, to avoid other other um, let's say eavesdroppers to uh, to uh, prevent um, uh, to prevent the communication between between uh, the vehicles and uh, to cause an accident so uh, that's why we support that uh, WFL can be used to reduce the latency and to prevent to prevent privacy in this uh, kind of uh, networks. Okay, uh, another question. I have, actually have many questions. Let me see uh, if I'm not missing any. Okay, uh, another question is still about mobility. And the question is, have you considered the mobility of users for instance in the edge computing page of your slides? When user associating with uh, base station one moves to the coverage uh, of base station two, that will be the impact that will impact the on the performance. Okay. Uh, as, okay. I said before, and we, 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 I, I said before that mobility is um, um, is a, a factor that negatively affects. Uh, the not only uh, the aircom but also the other uh, networks because and uh, we know well uh, because we worked uh, and you daniel in the in the past on uh, on uh, time varying uh, time varying um, fading channels uh, where uh, these are very uh, in, it's very difficult to uh, to deal with this kind of channel because we have several impairments. So uh, my, my general uh, answer is that uh, mobility, uh, mobility is uh, 
a factor that deteriorates the performance of this kind of uh, networks. And uh, it is actually a very interesting uh, research direction in order to, uh, to limit these, uh, these uh, results, these negative results of mobility in uh, WFL or the ERCOM, etc. Okay. Also, also, you know, you know, you know, uh, uh, mobility is also connected with asynchronous uh, communication that mentioned in uh, uh, in my slides. Uh, uh, so, because we, we support also asynchronous communication, since very interesting and uh, a very uh, challenging uh, research direction for in order to implement WFL uh, networks. Okay, another question is about uh, with uh, uh, with the learning process uh, provides better performance, centralized or federated learning. Which which which, which, which one process? gives a be better better model performance, centralized or federated learning? Okay, uh, okay, uh, this is uh, uh, this depends this depends actually on the application. A WFL is decentralized method, but uh, in some cases, in some cases, centralized methods are better than decentralized methods. Okay, we uh, believe that in uh, wireless applications, decentralized methods um, are uh, uh, more efficient because they because they preserve privacy and this is very important look in for example in um, in other applications in in uh, in, uh, in in uh, wired for example applications not wireless in wired applications it's not necessary to have uh, all the it's not necessary to have uh, non centralized methods but in wireless applications, in most of the cases, not in all of the, of the cases, but in most of the cases, we, we believe that uh, um, it is useful to have uh, non-centralized uh, methods. Okay, uh, regarding uh, the privacy, as you uh, mentioned, actually is one of uh, the key points for 6G. Do you think uh, we can fully preserve privacy using federated learning because uh, Okay, we are using a distributed learning uh, approach, but uh, even uh, when you extend uh, the model parameters instead of data, uh, these model parameters can be uh, reversely trusted, right? You are right, you are right. But uh, yeah. actually, actually it's, it's not possible to, pre to, to completely preserve um, privacy. Okay, it's not possible. But uh, by using uh, federated learning in, in, in wireless uh, network, we can um, um, increase increase the privacy. I yes. don't know exactly how many times we we, we can increase the privacy, but um, uh, it is evident that uh, it is better to to use um, this kind of uh, approach to. Instead, instead of uh, of to have of all the data, all the data from its dev the devices from the devices to submit to be submitted to, for example, to the base station to the central unit, it's better. It's better from the privacy point of view. Yeah. Submit to submit just the parameters, some parameters of the model. But it is it definitely we cannot completely preserve privacy. Yes, another question is how important is synchronization in the wireless federated learning paradigm? Okay, uh, uh, actually it is, synchronization, it, it is important for all the networks, okay? Uh, in uh, WFL, it is, uh, you mean in, in, our, in our case in, uh, in our um, uh, work uh, uh, we, with the city Noma, 
uh, synchronization is needed, uh, but um, synchronization is very critical. But in other cases, for example, if we, if we, if we can use um, uh, asynchronous federated, uh, wireless federated learning or um, in, uh, in ERCOM, if we can use, uh, if, if we use ERCOM for um, uh, WFL, I think uh, uh, synchronization is, of course, is needed, but it's not a, a critical as in, in some other cases. So my general uh, uh, answer is that uh, WFL, the, it's, not very, it's not very sensitive. It's not very sensitive to synchronization as other um, techniques. Okay. Uh, okay. I have another. I mean, general comment is about uh, the communication overhead, right? Because you, I, I understand that this communication overhead uh, behind the, I mean, the process is proportional to the number of model parameters, right? Yes. So imagine if you are working on, I mean, capacity limited uh, wireless channel, and how we can, uh, I mean use federated learning and supporting, a, for example, DP neural network. I think uh, this is feasible or what do you think? I think, I think it's feasible. I think it's feasible. And uh, the overhead, uh, the overhead by using, that, that is produced by, by submitting the parameters of the model is not um, uh, a high overhead compared to, for example, to have a network where, uh, where uh, all the data, uh, all the data from the devices are, are submitted uh, wirelessly to the central, to the central unit, to, to the base station. So uh, I think that uh, the overhead is a problem, but it's not a very a critical problem for um, uh, WFL. Okay, uh, another question. Uh... But about gra gradient descent, I can be computationally expensive. If you use a SGD, stochastic uh, gradient descent, for the local parameters. Sorry, sorry Daniel, about what? Uh, gra gradient descent. OK. So it's uh, computationally expensive. So if you use stochastic uh, gradient descent for the local uh, parameter updated, do you do you will lose out on performance in terms of convergence rate? We don't. We, we have not. Com, we, we we have not made any comparisons. Yet. I, I, I cannot reply to this question because we have not um, uh, made any uh, comparisons in order to to be able to reply to this question. Okay. Okay. Let me see if you have more questions. Actually. Uh... Uh, I think all the questions were... Uh... Okay, George, uh, maybe uh, it seems we don't, have, we don't have more questions and uh, uh, we are moving to the end of the seminar. Thank you uh, okay. once again uh, for your time and for this very nice talk. As I mentioned before, uh, this seminar, uh, has been recorded and will be uh, made available in our TII YouTube channel very soon. Okay, so thank you everybody. Thank you for joining us in one more telecom seminar and hope to see you in two weeks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, George. Thank you, thank you, Daniel. If someone wants to, uh, to ask any question, uh, can send any time email to me and uh, I will uh, reply, okay? Thank you, thank you very okay. much.